Were you shocked and disappointed when the Church of England approved a transgender liturgy in December 2018? If you're a vicar in the Church of England and receive a phone call from a man who wants to become a woman, or a woman who wants to become a man, you will now be in the position to offer them a service of celebration, of changing their gender. You'll be able to use water and oil and anoint them. You'll be able to give them a Bible as a gift and celebrate their change. And you will also be in a position to call them by the pronouns that they prefer. Today I want to give a theological perspective and background to how it is possible that a Protestant church can move away from what the Bible describes as marriage between a man and a woman and gender identity. But I want to do it slightly different today. I want to focus on the accommodation of theological liberalism in England over the past 50, 60 years. I'm going to focus on three liberal scholars who were part and parcel of formulating doctrine and also published very controversial liberal scholarship and see how that contributed to the current scenario. And these scholars are John Austin Baker, uh, Hugh Montefiore and David Jenkins. So the first theologian is John Austin Baker, uh, a well-established uh, Anglican scholar from Oxford who became quite influential on the Doctrine Commission in the Church of England. And Hugh uh, Montefiore informed us that Baker was instrumental in adapting and changing uh, the Declaration of Assent for vicars to sign up to. Uh, he used the famous words, bear witness, referring to the 39 articles and trying to interpret them as historical documents of centuries gone by and that we can reformulate and reinterpret them. That was Baker's contribution to the Doctrine Commission. Later on, he became chairman of the Doctrine Commission and he was in 1990 on a commission about gay marriage. So here is an interesting paragraph of Baker's contribution. In 1990, Baker became chairman of the House of Bishops Working Party set up to consider issues of human sexuality, primarily the matter of homosexuals in the church. The report proposed controversially, that while homosexuality might in some circumstances be acceptable in the laity, it could not be permissible among the clergy. Soon after his retirement, however, Baker declared that this distinction had been a serious mistake and said that gay clergy should enjoy the same freedom as the laity and be encouraged to marry. The second theologian I want to explore is Hugh Montefiore. Uh, he became quite notorious for claiming that Jesus was gay. And in this book, he describes in quite detail exactly how that whole controversy worked out. I'm going to read the key sections for us. So Montefiore was invited to give a talk on the centenary of the modern church, churchmen's union at Oxford University. Um, and the subject for the lecture was Jesus, the revelation of God. And then he goes on to say, I still think that the lecture was rather a good one. My argument was that if Jesus was to reveal God, then there would have to be certain aspects of his character which did this. I analyzed those characteristics which he had in common with mankind, those which he shared with the Jews of his day, and those which were peculiar to himself. Among the last named, I especially noted his self-identification with those who were despised in the world's eyes. I pointed out that he was believed not to have been procreated by his legal father, that he was born away from home like a displaced person, that during his ministry there were times when he did not have anywhere to lay his head, that he suffered the most ignominious kind of death known to the Roman world, and that he died between two revolutionaries. It was as though God, in becoming man, was determined to identify himself with the most despised and unfortunate of his human creation. I then speculated that it could be that he was also homosexual in orientation. If so, this would fit in with these other points I had made about his identification with the outcast, for the Jew hated homosexuality. I went on to suggest that there would be pointers in this direction. He had not married 
and Jewish males were supposed to have produced a male heir by the time that they were 20. The third theologian is the notorious and famous Bishop David Jenkins. Now he, of course, is famous for his doubts on the resurrection. He said uh, unequivocally that he does not believe that the empty tomb of Jesus is supposed to be believed. He said that in 1984-85. Uh, and, of course, then the bishops uh, had a synod meeting where they confessed the resurrection, but they articulated the statement in such a way that it was so wooly that Jenkins could also ascribe to it. And at the same synod, you had Archbishop Bob Runshi, who argued that the skeptics should have room within the church. Now, uh, on gay uh, marriage and civil partnerships, uh, Jenkins, before his death, conducted a ceremony when he officiated over a ceremony where a gay vicar was joined in a civil partnership. So there we have three vicars, John Austin Baker, Hugh Montefiore and David Jenkins. All three of them were liberal scholars who uh, in the 70s, 80s accommodated uh, views that would uh, renounce the virgin birth, the atonement of Christ. Uh, they all had liberal theological uh, views on key doctrines. And they also went on later on then to renounce the biblical view on marriage. What do you think about this? Do you think there's a link between the current debates about transgenderism and gay marriage and theological liberalism in the 70s, 80s and how the church accommodated those and now the door's been opened for uh, marriage to be redefined? What do you think? Let me know in the comments and thank you so much for joining today and subscribe to my channel if you want to.